happening. There's churches all across the UK gathering together that maybe at this time, let's all exalt the name of Jesus in our nation. So come forward. We've got no mask. You can sing, dance, loud as one. Don't be restricted. Just get that lockdown mentality off of us. Shake it off of us. Come forward. Saying come forward, no one's coming forward. I want to see people come forward. Let's do this not for ourselves. Don't do it for yourself. Do it for the nation. Do it for the generations to come. Do it for something bigger than yourself to come forward. Let's shake, let's shake the atmosphere. Shake the nation this morning. Cause all my life you have been
goodness is running out, it's running out.
with all of heaven we are singing hallelujah with all of
secrets You're the name above all names So be exalted now in the heavens As your glory fills this place You alone deserve our praise You're the name above all names So be exalted now in the heavens As your glory fills this place God dwell in the midst of us God dwell in the midst of us God dwell in the midst of us God come and dwell in the midst of us Jesus You alone deserve our praise You're the name above all names So be exalted now in the heavens As your glory fills this place Death could not hold you The veil tore before you You silenced the boast Of sin and grave The heavens are roaring The praise of your glory For you are raised to life again Death could not, death could not hold Told before you, you silence the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. You have no rival, you have no equal. Veil tore before you, you silenced the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. And you have no right, you have no
powerful name it is Nothing can stand against What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus What a powerful name it is What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus Christ my King What a powerful name it is Nothing can stand what a powerful name it is. Name I just want the men also to come forward. And we're just going to pray for this church. We're going to pray that we will fulfill the destiny and the vision that God has placed yes. upon us. Somebody lift up the name of the Lord right now. Ramo mama soto toko robo mama to speak, oh Lord, in each other thoughts this morning. Oh, Father God, I lift up your name of a castle church. Before the foundation of age, you knew that there will be a day like this when the believers of Christ will come together, God, to give you worship, to have fellowship with you. We are gathered this morning, not in any other name, but in your name, Jesus. The name the Lord has conquered the whole world. The name that, oh Lord, the never had defeated the enemy. We lift up your name over this house. And we plead your blood that we shed on the cross. For the love that you have for humanity. To the redeem mankind, oh Lord, from the hands of the enemy. And reconcile us back to the Father. This morning we lift up your name over Capstone Church. And we plead your blood over this house. Over Capstone Church. And we pray, my Lord and my God. Bringing the blood to the very core of the vision of this house. Remo Seteke. We thank you, my Lord and my God, for the vessels that you have chosen. O Lord, to run, O Lord, with this vision. Without weary and tiredness. We lift up your servant, O Lord. Apostle Rakish and praise you, O Lord. And we lift up the leadership of this house. We lift up every minister of this house. Right to the tongue as we pray. Bring your blood as a seal, as a seal of protection. Each and every soul, that's the soul, Moses, O 
Lord, tell the Israelites to mark their dresses with the blood of the angel of the time. He passed over them. This morning, oh Lord, we plead the blood of the sacrificial lamp of the blood of Jesus Christ. We plead the blood as a seal of protection over each and every one. And we declare that the vision of this house stands up, that the purpose of our God, our gathering prevails in the name of Jesus, that the name of the Lord will be exalted. We declare this house a house of worship to the Lord. We declare this house a house of prayer to the Lord. That many will come here and they will have a Lord, oh Lord, solution to whatever they need. They come here and they meet you, Jesus, because this is your place. Jesus will dwell in here. Anyone that steps in here will never go back the same way. But they'll be transformed. They'll be set free. They'll be delivered. Oh, my Rekemomo. We pray for breakthroughs, my God. We lift up every burden, oh Lord, of each and every one in this house. But that's what we say, let your presence dwell in here. Let your presence dwell in here. We pray, my Lord, and my God, that comes so church, oh Lord, who accelerate to the height that you have taken in for this church, my God, in the name of Jesus. And we condemn every tongue, we silence every voice, every judgment. We raise with the blood of Jesus. We come from the fire of God. Consume every tongue, every chase, every qualified. In the name of Jesus, we lift up the name of the Lord. 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 Oh, the name of the Lord. We don't want a visitation, Jesus. 
we want you to make this your dwelling place, Jesus. Oh, Jesus Christ, a place, oh God, where those who are in darkness will come because they see the light, oh Jesus Christ. Come. We love you here, Jesus. You are wanted here. You are needed here, oh God. We worship you, we honor you, we love you. We give you glory, Jesus. We say, take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place in our hearts, Jesus. In our minds, oh God. Oh, Jesus Christ.
we just want you everywhere, Jesus. We want you to fill this place with your presence. Every heart, every life, every area, those watching. And as we come, to remember your life given up for us. We declare that if you could recover from the deepest tragedy, from the greatest pain imaginable, then there is ability released for you to recover, to turn around, to renew. You make all things new. You make all things new. I just really want to hurry along this morning because time's going. But um, rather than saying too much, uh, I just wanted to use an illustration before we break bread and take from the cup. And so I'm just going to ask Aban and Jeevan, I will pick on Jeevan again. I think, is Daniel around anywhere? He might be a good candidate. If you could just come quickly to the stage, very quickly, because we're trying to um, keep the time here. So just come and stand by me. Yes, come on, guys. Bit slow, bit slow. Come on, hurry up, hurry up. That's better. Okay. And get on, just get on there in the line. Daniel, you get in there. Okay, Daniel's in the middle. He's got the opportunity. Daniel is representing the presence of the Lord. Okay, right. So, Abban's a believer. Jeevan's a believer. This is the Lord. And obviously, it's not really the Lord, but it's Daniel representing the Lord. Okay, Matthew 18 verse 20 says that, Jesus says there, that wherever two or three come together in his name, there he is in the midst of them. I really want to just try and encourage us as we come to eat and drink in a few moments just to really understand the dynamic of how when we come together and we seek after God, we are brought together. So at the moment, Abban's been a fairly good boy this week. So back off just a little. Stay there. He's, he's not too far from the presence of the Lord. But Jeevan's been really holy. So no, oh, Jeevan's... Jeevan's right there. But there's a problem. There's a problem. Where Daniel, representing the Lord, wants to be, he wants to be in the midst. That's in the middle. In the middle. So Jeevan has to back off a little bit and for him to be in the middle. So now he's in the middle. But the trouble is, Jeevan is not able to express that closeness because the middle position is a little bit distant. But if Aban and Jivan both decide we want to get near to Jesus and they both draw near, they're both now with the Lord. But what also do we notice? They are near one another. They are near one another. And that's the key thing about as we eat and drink today, we are celebrating the Lord's, yes, individual saving of us, yes, but we're doing it together. Paul was saying in 1 Corinthians 11 that when you come together, he was speaking about when you come together. It's that central act of unity with the Lord and with one another. And if we all desire, whether we're online or whether we're here, if we all desire to come near together, we will come closer to him together and we will come nearer to one another together. Guys, off you go. Well done, Daniel. Don't get illusions of grandeur now. So um, let's come and eat. Let's take the bread together. Jesus, we say together that on the night that you were betrayed, you took bread, you broke it, you gave it to all the disciples gathered there. And you said, as a remembrance that was to go on through the ages, take, eat, do this in remembrance of me, my body broken for you. Let's eat together.
So a cup was taken. A cup that Jesus spoke of just before his blood would run. And who knows the depth of what that meant to him personally. But we say together today, we are so thankful that you went that far, that you completed everything you were called to do. And you brought us together right now, this morning, to celebrate together the new covenant in your blood. And we drink together now in remembrance of you, Jesus. As often as we do this, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. you are not reflecting your father whilst there's any form of limitation you're not reflecting your father because God is unlimited he is uncontained and he is unrestrained and he demonstrated that in the way that he sent his son to die for us because it was such an outrageous brutal just terrible death it, it, there was just no limits to it to such a point that Isaiah said that people couldn't even look upon him that was the level of unrestrained love the father showed for us that was the level of unrestrained love that Jesus showed for the father and for those that the father loved amen and you can tell when that happens in a room it's like a switch goes off and it cannot be switched on from a platform. The, the worship leader, if a worship leader doesn't want people to worship God unrestrained, then they need to go and get saved. But, but the point of it is, is, is nobody can make you do it. Nobody can make you do it. But when you decide, and it's not what it looks like on the outside, it's what it looks like on the inside. And when unrestrained worship happens, it's like Mary at the feet of Jesus. We're going to take an offering. But Mary's sacrifice to Jesus, it was unrestrained. Why was it unrestrained? Because she did not care what anybody thought about what she was doing. She didn't care about public opinion. She didn't care about what she looked like. She didn't care about what the religious leaders were going to say. She didn't care about the person next to her. As long as we're somebody else conscious, we're not God conscious, really. 
But the moment you get fixed in Him and you forget about everything else and you just totally let the floodgate go, then you start reflecting your Father. And it reflects in everything. Jesus said, everyone who leaves houses and fields, mother and father, daughters and sons, won't fail to receive a hundred times as much in this life and with it, with it persecution. If you're not being persecuted because of your generosity, you've not yet got into kingdom mentality. You hear what I say? Are you being persecuted because you're too blessed? That's what it literally means. We actually read Malachi when we were leading our church. I read in Malachi, if you bring the full tithe into the storehouse, I will pour out a blessing you won't, have con- won't be able to contain. So I looked at that and thought, well, we've still got room to contain. So we, Joe and I, we started to pray, say, Lord, we want to be blessed at such a level that we haven't got room to contain. And about three months later, we discovered that Joe was having twins. The car wasn't big enough. The house wasn't big enough. Nothing was big enough. And this is what it means. Whilst there's an empty chair in this room, we are not living in the fullness of the blessing that God wants. Whilst there's room in your bank account, you're not living in the fullness of what God wants. What I mean by that is not that God wants us just to have loads of cash, but what God wants us to have is limitless capacity to bless others. And where that starts is in the little things, in the giving. It's by you accessing and saying, I'm unrestrained. I saw a video this week of a guy doing a deadlift. You know what a deadlift is? It's when you pick the bar up like that and you pick it up. He picked up 500 kilos, broke a record by doing it. Before he did it, it was said it was impossible. Do you know, you'll never see it until you push the envelope. And the envelope begins in our worship of Him and it begins in our giving to Him. Are you unrestrained? Amen. So I want you to get ready to give. We're going to sing again because Rachel likes the could be behind. Private child. So let's just lift our hands to Him and let's just worship Him unrestrained just for a couple of minutes. Just do that now. Come on. While you're giving, just worship Him unrestrained. Unrestrained. Unlimited. Uncontrolled. Just release your worship to Him. Release your praise to Him. You decide to do it. We praise you, Jesus.
masks.
just want to thank the worship team as they step off and welcome back church we will see the seats fill as one of the things I um, I want to say is um, that I like today I like today um, and um, if anyone's new first time you're watching us we want to welcome you honor you if it's your first anyone first Sunday here at Capstone Church and, okay so oh, oh yes <laughs> Chitra people don't know about the first one <laughs> Oh my gosh. Chitra, would you like to come forward and introduce your two babies? Come on. How many of you want to hear from Chitra? Come on, Chitra. And Seelan. Seelan was also involved. Come on, Chitra, Seelan. Come on. We're going to take an agreement that the one child looks like uh, Chitra and the other like Seelan, just for Seelan's sake, okay? Come, come introduce your baby. Babies. Hi everyone. <laughs> so last year, Kezia was born. <laughs> this year, Elora is born. Praise <laughs> God. So, next and next year. <laughs> oh, Celine, want to say something? How has it been? Hello, everyone. <laughs> I, I, I see Seelan's hair, and I feel like Chitra dressed Elora, Kazea, and Seelan. There. Let's give them a big God bless you. They have taken the, the, the word of the Lord at heart and said, we will multiply. I love them. Just give them a big God bless you. Uh, Hallelujah. I think we have a testimony of healing. Would you like to come forward and share your testimony? Hi, so um, since February, I, I had this frozen shoulder and it was very painful. And I couldn't, I couldn't put my arm like that. I couldn't put my arm like that. And I certainly couldn't my, put my arm like that. But in worship today... This one, which has been the problem, I could put it right up. And quite frankly, I didn't even know I was doing it till it was done. And it's, it's like amazing. So I think, you know, it says in the word that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So if any of you have got any stiff joints or uh, painful joints, just put your hands on them right now. And uh, Lord, we just thank you that you set the captives free my arm was very captive <laughs> and uh, lord we're just praying for a release of your healing anointing right now into all those joints let every information go let every pain go and we declare freedom in jesus name freedom thank you lord thank you lord for touching us amazing thank you thank you, thank you linda so I didn't know Linda had a frozen shoulder in uh, her left side. So I also had a frozen shoulder. So mine's been steadily improving, but this is something I couldn't do on Friday. So here you go. There you go. Hey. Hallelujah. So God is healing. Thank you. I received the testimony. Rocky, she's raising his hands because he went to play cricket yesterday. Okay. And um, he wants to go play today also. Okay. So um, he, do you have a testimony of how you won the cricket match yesterday, Rocky? Okay. <laughs> Just, you know, this has been his life. I've not seen him smile. Yesterday, Rayma was like, have you seen Appa smile going to go play cricket? Okay. So somebody, one of my friends saw the picture on Facebook, called me and asked me, is it because he gets to leave the house <laughs> that he's so happy? So I wanted to take a picture of him walking back into the house just to prove a point. But then I thought it's mute. Okay. Some people have let me know that there are no goals in, in cricket. Okay, I, I do know that. Okay, but hashtag runs does not work. <laughs> so, 
to those who get it, may the Lord bless you. To those who don't, bless you too. Hallelujah. Praise God. It is a great day to praise God. How many of you love what my boy has done over here? Where's Stephen? Come on, let's give Stephen a big God bless you. You did this in like two days, didn't you? Look at that. Come on. Come, on. Come on, let's give him a big God bless you. So we're going to get a scripture uh, over here uh, and it says, uh, and the scripture is going to be that we sh are not grasshoppers. Is that right? No, 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 no. It's a surprise. I think next week it's coming. So Stephen, you've done such an amazing job. Well done. Welcome back, everybody. Good to see so many of you. It's really good to see expressions. Hallelujah. Can we smile at least? Hallelujah. So praise God. So I, uh, I've, been, um, I've been praying as pastors should. <laughs> okay. So yeah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I've been praying and, you know, I was saying, I was, I was really, I have to tell you, I was really excited for today. Okay. I, I don't know. I like usually have to wait for the alarm to go off uh, even on a Sunday morning. Okay. Because sometimes I have the battle of the blanket. Okay. My battle, the blanket wants to stay with me and you know, I have to fight it and the blanket takes a life of its own and literally, oh there, see, I see there are people who identify with this, but as I am, I, as I am uh, this morning, I don't know what happened. I was like, Six o'clock, I was like, ta-da, you know, and I only, like, I slept at 2.30 or 3, I was like, ta-da, and I was like, my gosh, what a great day, and I was all excited to see you guys, okay, and also, I love the word that the Lord has given. Sometimes, you know, as a preacher, the Lord gives you a word, and you're like, do I have to? Okay, you, there are days you're like, Lord, they're going to hate me. They're going to pray for a new pastor. Okay, they're going to be praying for salvation for the pastor's life and for the pastor's family. Okay, it's, it's just one of those, you know, and this word I was so excited for. And I have to tell you where the word came from, okay, from the Lord. Yes, okay. But I was asking the Lord and the Lord was reminding me of when we planted Capstone Church. And one of the first talks that I gave, and I think George and Sarah were there, we were at the Beckton Center, okay, Matthew and Leo were there, and I, I'm sure they remember this talk word for word, okay, I mean, Matthew could come here and just go preach it like this without me, because, I mean, it was 15 years ago, so they remember, you know, and, um, but this, the Lord has opened my eyes to some new truths, and so I'm going to jump off from where I left off 10 year, 12 years ago, and I'm going to continue the word. Hallelujah. You guys are so serious this morning. Hallelujah. I think we need Daniel up here to represent Jesus. I'm just saying, okay? I know, it's a good rep. Uh, did you see Eben's face when, when Michael told him that you're the one that's far from God? Okay? I like, Eben was like, no, that's not me. And Jeevan's like, <laughs> in his heart. And he was like, mm-hmm. You know, in his mind, he was like, <laughs> literally. And then when, when Michael asked, asked Daniel to move, Jeevan's like, no, you're not moving. No, you're not moving. Even if I have to tackle you to the ground, Jesus, you're not moving. And Evan's like, come over here, Jesus. Come over here. I am more anointed than that boy over there. <laughs> Hallelujah. So welcome back to church, everybody. <laughs> and so praise the Lord. So this is the word that the Lord is teaching me from, and it's going to be teaching you from today, is from the book of Nehemiah. See, I like the book of Nehemiah. It gives me my favorite scripture, that the joy of the Lord shall be my strength. Hallelujah. That's a good scripture. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Now, now, you guys are not so serious. Now you don't have the masks on. I know who's not saying amen, and I know who's not. Okay? I can tell now. I'm telling you now. Okay? So... One of the things that the Lord, when we first started, the Lord told us was that we are not to be a lone ranger ministry. You know, where we are just one person, top, like top heavy, and the, the rest are pew warmers. And so the, the vision of the church came through how Nehemiah rebuilt a wall around a city. And that's where the vision of Capstone Church came from. You know, where each one was building the wall that was in front of them. Now, as we go into the scripture, I'm giving you a little bit of the background. You know, the people of Israel had been taken into exile. 
And Nehemiah was a cupbearer in the house of the, uh, of the Gentile king. And he got a message saying that the city is in ruins, that, that uh, Jerusalem has been burned down, the gates are destroyed, the walls are destroyed. And as he gets this message, his heart breaks for the things of God. His heart breaks for what is happening to what God loves, what is happening to what God has built, what God has established. He is moved by what, what moves God. And so he approaches the Gentile king and he speaks to him and he says, listen, I have to go do the Lord's work. Somebody say, I have to do the Lord's work. Now, before we get into the word, I just want you to close your eyes. Lift up your hands to the Lord, wherever you're at right now. I don't want you to say, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news. Father, I pray right now that you will fill each one. Fill us with your presence. Fill us with your purpose. Fill us, Lord, with your faith and destiny. In Jesus' name, amen. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. So Nehemiah, in this portion of scripture, okay, in this, is seeing the desolation, and you know what? He cares. Somebody says he cares. You know, and Nehemiah is concerned about one thing and one thing only. It's the glory of God. That God should get his glory. That God's name should not be reproached. And as we are coming into this, into this season, you know, when, 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 when the lockdown happened, one of the things that was attacked is whether the church is essential or not essential. You know, they want to make the church obsolete or they want to at least call it obsolete. And I love it when in, Acts, in Psalm chapter 2, where the, the nations rage against God and his people and, and they want to break the bonds, they want to break the unity, they want to break the togetherness of the church. You know, and what does God do? The response that God has is that he laughs in heaven. And he says, and, and then there's a conversation between the father and the son, that is Jesus Christ. And the response is, is ask of me the nations and I will give you the nations as your inheritance. Ask of me the nations. So when the nations rage against God, how is our response? Our response is from heaven. And it says, ask of me the nations and he will give it to us as our inheritance we don't need gold for the kingdom of God the, the, the kingdom of heaven is paved with gold we don't need the economy of the world we need the treasures of heaven which is God's people and we need to ask for the nations hallelujah we need to care hallelujah and in Nehemiah it says in Nehemiah 1.3 and they said to me, the survivors who are left from the captivity in the province there, the province are there in great distress and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem is also broken down and its gates are burned with fire. What the Lord was telling me is this. We need to care about what's happening in the kingdom of heaven as it is in heaven on earth we need to care we need to care whether there is reproach against the church we don't join it we build a wall hallelujah we build a wall and the word of the Lord goes on to say in that verse, one, verse 3. It says, the wall of Jerusalem is also broken down and its gates are burned with fire. 2.17 said this, and I said to them, you see the distress that we are in. Now Jerusalem lies waste and its gates are burned with fire. See, some of us will just point out to what has happened. We'll say, look, Jerusalem is destroyed. The gates are are." are burned down the seats are empty 
The church is not functioning. We'll point out, look there, look there, look there. Look at the disrepair. Look at the dis, dis, disunity, discord. We'll say, look there, look there, look there, look there, look there, look there. But that's not our portion. Nehemiah says the portion. And he says, come, let us build the wall of Jerusalem that we may no longer be reproached. See, I believe that God is calling us to care. To take personal responsibility to build the wall around a city. Yes. Hallelujah. I believe that God is calling us at this time. God is calling us to build. It is us, an individual call. We can say, look, the chairs are empty. Or we can go into the streets, into the ramparts, into the byways and the highways. And call the people into the house of the Lord. And they says, Come home, son. Come home, daughter. There is room for you in the house of the Father. Hallelujah. Come, let us. Somebody say, let us. Let us. Let us build. Let us build. I want you to say, turn to somebody and look and say, come, let us build. Come, let us build. And point to them and says, he means you. She means him. Come, let us build. See, the Gentiles delighted in mocking their Jewish neighbors. The world, the press delights in mocking the church. I've never seen so many articles about ministers till I, in the last as much as I've seen in the last year. Suddenly ministers and their offering messages have become really popular. It's not popular among the church. It's popular among the press. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ministers releasing the breath of the Holy Spirit is more in the news than ever before. Maybe I'll be in the news. <sighs> They have twisted and turned what the church has said. Together with me. <sighs> Our acts of prophetic and faith have been ridiculed and mocked. Even at the time of, Je of Nehemiah, they said, look, your city is burnt. It's desolate. But Nehemiah cared. And he said, come, let us build. Come, let us build. And I'm, what the Lord was telling me is, he said, Capstone Church is his idea. And the vision of this house is his vision. Hallelujah. And if this doesn't accomplish what it has called to do, it's because we haven't built. The vision is there. The prophetic is there. The people are there. Come, let us build. Come, let us build. See, the Gentiles love to point out the, the destruction of God's beloved. That's not our portion. Hallelujah. Psalm 48 verse 2 says, Zion city is his home he lives on his holy mountain high and glorious joy filled and favored zion mountain looms in the furthest reaches of the north a city of our incomparable king in the new testament the church is his body and it should be without spot or blemish but who builds that you and i my friends you and I build that. Hallelujah. Ephesians 3.21 says that the, the glory in the, the, God longs for the glory in the church and us to glory in Christ Jesus. Christ is the head of the church. 
He is our salvation. There is no other name given amongst men in whose name there is salvation except the name of Jesus. And by his stripes we are healed. By his cross we are redeemed. And by his death and resurrection we are saved and translated from death into life. There is no other way to heaven except the name of Jesus Christ. There is salvation only in one name. There is deliverance only in one name. And his name is Jesus. And he is the Lord. And at his name every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess that he alone is Lord. There is only one son. And his name is Jesus. And he is the begotten of the Father sent to redeem the nations of the earth. To the fulfillment of the promise of a king that is coming again in glory a second time. To lift up his bride without blemish, without spot. Into a place where there is no need for a son that burns. But there is one son who will be the light. And there will be in that place no more tears, no more sickness. There will be no more sorrow, no more pain. But there will be only joy. There will be only worship. And there will all be only be peace. Why? Because the Prince of Peace reigns in all his glory. God loves his church. And he wants to see it built. Come, let us build. Come, let us build. Psalm 87 verse 2 says this. God loves the gates of Zion. It's his favorite place on earth. The word of the Lord says we are his gates. Psalm 24 says, lift up your hands, O you gates. We are the gates. And we need to build one another up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to read 1 Samuel 4.21. And this is when, in those days, in the Old Testament, we would find that the presence of, are you guys with me? The presence of God was in the Ark of the Covenant. And where the Ark of the Covenant was, that was where the presence of God was. And the Philistines came and took it. Together with me. They took it. And it took a David to go bring it back. Hallelujah. But it wasn't easy, it was work. He had to figure out how God wanted it done. Hallelujah. He had to go bring it back. But look at 1 Samuel 4.21. And she named the child Ichabod. Saying the glory has departed from Israel. Because the ark of God had been captured. Because of her father-in-law and her husband. I like. I like the glory of God to be with us. So simple. Ichabod. So this, um, I didn't know that it was a biblical name. But when I was a kid, you know, I, like during, like growing up in the American culture, it, during Halloween, they'd bring, you know, the headless horseman. And his, like there was this show, you know, they, they, the, the tales of the headless horseman. And the guy's name was Ichabod Crane. Okay. And, um, and so th this name Ichabod rings in my head because I know that many of you think that I'm six foot two. But I'm not. I'm actually five, two, and three fourth. Okay? Don't forget the three fourth. Okay? Please. Okay? Repeat after me. Five, two, and three. You get me. You get me. See? You guys know. Five, two, and three fourth. Okay? That's my height. So, so when I had the, the previous, the, 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 the five series, the BMW that I was driving, my friends, a lot of them are 5'10", 5'11", you know. They're, I call them Amazons, okay. They call me short and I call them Amazons. It's just love and friendship, okay. One day I was driving, we were meeting at this restaurant. And as I was driving in, they said that it looked like the car had no driver. <laughs> okay, it was like the headless, like it was like a, a, the headless horseman with, dro drove in the car. And I was thinking, Ichabod Crane. <laughs> you know, this name stays in, and so now... So Rakesh has gone another car now. Now it looks, I, I can't even see over that thing. Okay, so I am literally sometimes driving 
by sight and not by faith. Sorry, this is being recorded. Can we edit this out? <laughs> Hallelujah. I drive. I can see over everything. Hallelujah. I'm prophetic. But she named the child Ichabod. And I want you to understand this. And I'm going to take a stand on this. We are not in the season of Ichabod. We are not in the season where the glory of God has departed from the nation. We are not in the season of Ichabod where the glory of God has left the house. No, we are not in the season of Ichabod. We are in the season where the coming of the Lord is near, where the presence of the Lord is here. Why? Because we will worship him and we will give him praise and our God is faithful and he is there when we gather in his name. Hallelujah. So let me tell you something. I believe God is calling us to work together. Come, let us build. The, the world wants to ignore the church, wants to attack the church. If we don't take a stand, who will? And the weapons of our warfare are not of this earth. Our weapons look like love. Our weapons look like hospitality. I want you to say the word hospitality. Somebody say hospitality. Say hospitality. Say hospitality. Let me tell you, write this down, that hospitality is one of the best weapons to use today to win this battle. The battle of social distancing is canceled by the spirit of hospitality. The hospitality is our portion. Jesus was constantly eating. Thank you. One person. And feast. Why a better word? The kingdom of heaven is like a feast, my Lord said. Are you guys with me? See, if we are people of God, we're not to speak about the scandals of the church. The world is saying, if God is so strong, why is it so weak? Why? Because we're allowing a spirit of indifference to manifest and we're allowing a spirit of disunity and we're allowing a spirit of discontent that's not our portion come not your neighbor just pss, 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 and say come let us build together so the purpose of the work that we're doing and let me say this to capstone church because today I'm speaking about the vision to the house. The, the vision to the house is to understand that the purpose of the work is God. This is in his heart. The purpose of the work is God. We are building his house for his name, for his glory. Hallelujah. And the purpose is God ordained. Are you with me? So, you know when the enemy says don't work, it's the enemy. God is not telling you not to build this house. Ask me for a scripture, Haggai. Hallelujah. Only the enemy wants you to go build your own house. You'll be like, ah, oh, but God, this, that, this, that. And when you're doing this, that, you're getting dish dash. And you wonder why. Why? Because we're called to build God's house. I can end my talk there. But I won't. <laughs> is that for me to finish? Okay, I'm just making sure, okay. The second thing that the Lord was saying is, and I, I heard a man of God speak about this, is, is first we have to understand the purpose of God. And building his house, the church, and expansion of the kingdom is his purpose. Hallelujah. The second is the pattern of the work. And I believe that, like I, okay, I'm just going to say this, okay. You will see the word rebuild so much in Nehemiah, okay. In just in Nehemiah chapter 3, six times the word rebuild, rebuild, rebuild comes out. And I was thinking, why do we, what do we rebuild? We need to rebuild godly foundations. Okay, we're not to do, do, like, they're, like, it's God 
godly principles, godly foundations. And as simple as that, uh, this man of God called George Morrison said this. He says that he was saying that this is for restoration. No new material is needed. We don't need to add to this. Thou shall not lie. Stick to it. Thou shall not covet thy neighbor's stuff. Stick to it. I don't need my neighbor's big house or big car. Because first of all, in the big car, no one will see me. There will be reports of a headless driver. You know, and if you see it, you know it's, they're attacking the church again, you know. <laughs> I went there. Oh, gosh. Okay. Those of you who have anything to say, you can email Rakesh Kurian, okay? Hallelujah. See, see, we're, it, I, like, I'm not looking to reinvent clever new things or invent new things cl cleverly. God gives wisdom 100%, okay? And there is a new wine for a new season. But that doesn't mean you forget the foundational principles of Christianity. The cross is the foundational principle of Christianity. Jesus is a foundational principle of Christianity. Worship is a foundational principle of Christianity. Worshiping the Lord, not ourselves, by the way, okay, is a foundational principle of Christianity. The Father's love is a foundational principle of Christianity. Hospitality is a foundational principle of Christianity. It says, you may entertain angels. Hallelujah. You know why you're not in the, uh, seeing angels? Invite some people home. Sometimes I preach better than you respond. I find that is so many of the times, okay, I'm just saying, okay. So my, my YouTube, okay, um, you know, like your algorithm changes. So my YouTube algorithm went from pugs to now football. Okay, and I have, it's full of Cristiano Ronaldo's interviews. I don't know why, okay? I've been watching and watching his bicycle kick between him and Juventus. It's not him alone, okay? But that I'm a, like my, I don't know what's going on with my YouTube algorithm, okay? But yesterday, last night, okay, as, as I was preparing the word and as I finished, I was about, I said, let me watch a YouTube thing. And it was one of his interviews and it made me laugh. I, I'm not sure whether, like, he, who's the best? He says, I'm the best. Messi? No. He may think he's the best. I'm the best. And I, I was like, this man, okay, who should... Who should your son, you know, have a tattoo of on his arm because Wayne Rooney's had, um, this is all useless information in my head now, okay? I don't even know why I know all this now, okay? Wayne Rooney's son has Ronaldo fake tattooed on his hand, okay? So this guy asked Ronaldo, you guys are learning all sorts of things now, okay? So ask Ronaldo, if your son had, uh, you know, other things, uh, like, like Messi's name, how would you feel? And Ronaldo says, that's okay. My name, Messi's name. These are best football players in the world. And I thought, that's confidence, my friends. That's confidence, you know? And I was thinking about this, and I thought, I don't even know why I went to the story right now, okay? <laughs> my gosh, this is what happens, okay? But what I'm saying is this, okay? Sometimes you need to know that you're the called of the Lord. Did you see how I turned that around? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. You need to know that you are the favorite. You need to know that you are the best for that position. Oh my gosh, that was such a stretch. <laughs> but we rebuild godly foundations, hospitality, evangelism, okay? Prophecy. Teaching of God's words, prayer, love, these are the simple things. And if we're not doing this and we're going to new fundal, new fangled ideas, okay, let's, that doesn't work. We have to do, let's, you can make the house whatever decoration you want on the walls, but the foundation has to be strong and the foundation has to be the word. We rebuild the right things, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And second thing, oh, yes, 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 give, give, give the Lord a hand. Yes, 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 y
Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. What are you doing with your life, Jeevan? <laughs> You're still thinking about Cristiano Ronaldo, right? I just... Oh my gosh, that was okay. That was, that was a bit of a detour, like really seriously. I don't even know. This is what happens when you watch YouTube before you go to bed. Watch some Christian songs, my gosh. Hallelujah. That'll come. You'll be like, hallelujah. Okay. So secondly, <laughs> repair. So one of the things that the Lord was, this, this scripture, we all know this. And the word repair apply, appears 35 times in the book of Nehemiah. Somebody say repair. Say repair. repair. No, no, no. Say it like you mean it. Repair. repair. Okay? And it means to make strong and firm. Make strong and firm. And one of the things that I believe that God is asking us, and this is about us individually, God is asking us, okay, to repair things within our own lives. We need to dialogue with Him. We need to connect with Him. We've allowed our spirits to have things stolen from us that should be there. And we, we've allowed the enemy to put things that shouldn't be there. Hallelujah. Our wells are sometimes getting tampered with. And we need to repair. Somebody say repair. repair. And this is a scripture that the Lord was really putting into my heart. And that Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 5. Catch us the foxes. The little foxes that spoil the vines. For our vines have tender grapes. And the Lord was telling me, be careful of the little foxes. I have this bunch of foxes that come into my house, okay? I've told Stephen like a thousand times, if he can do this, he can stop those foxes, right? Okay, and you know what they do? You know what the foxes did? James, bought, James and Jerry bought me a bonsai tree. And I thought, you know, it's a small tree. Bonsais are not big, okay? I'm telling you now, okay? Those of you wondering. And so I bought this bonsai tree. And then the bonsai tree was looking outside into my backyard. I thought, here, bonsai, you want to see the sun in reality, right? Okay? So I took the bonsai tree and I put it on this table I have outside. And you know what the foxes did? It attacked the bonsai. And it ate that bonsai. And I was like... And you know what the foxes did after that? They understood that they can, I don't know, I think they had a lesson, you know. They started pulling out all my plants. I allowed one fox to attack one bonsai. It went after all my plants. Beware of the little foxes. Basically, check out what is attacking your life. And it doesn't come as a, as sometimes as a roaring lion. It comes as little foxes that are stealing your little bonsai tree. Your little gifts that people you love have given you. Little testimonies that you have. Little blessings that you have. These, bons these little foxes are coming in and we need to repair the fences. The enemy is coming and these foxes come and they love to poop. Right next to my gates and doors. So that when I'm walking in and out of my house, I have to step in poop. Beware of the little foxes. We may be walking in poop because we're not aware. Let me tell you, 2 John 8 says this, be on your guard that you do not lose all that we have diligently worked for, but received the full reward. Capstone Church, you have done well. You have worked hard. Hallelujah. You have worked hard. You have done well. But our journey isn't over. Our mission isn't finished. There is much more to do. Hallelujah. There is much more to do. Our journey isn't finished. We must recognize that this is God's work. Nehemiah 2.18 says, And I told them that the hand of my God, which is good upon me, and also the king's word that he spoke to me, and he said, Let us rise up and build. And they set their hands to this good work. Hallelujah. Building God's house is good work. And we must set our hands 
to doing the work. D.L. Modi, how many of you have heard of the evangelist D.L. Modi? D.L. Modi said this, a great many people have got a false idea about the church. They have got an idea that the church is a place to rest in. We do rest in God's love, 100%. But resting doesn't mean that we get a nicely cushioned pew. We come in and keep the church out of bankruptcy by giving a little bit. We listen to the minister out of courtesy. Laugh at some of her jokes sometimes. This is not D.L. Modi, I've modified it. Most people, that's all they want. The idea of working in the kingdom for them, the work in the church, never enters their mind. Building takes effort. Come, let us build. One Corinthians 12, and I want to read out the scripture. Verse 12 onwards says, For as the body is one and has many members, but also the members of one body being many are one body, so also in Christ. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and all, all been made to drink with, into one spirit. Do you understand? We are one spirit. We are one body. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not a body? If the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Is the whole body, if the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? And now God has set the members, each one of them, and in the body just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now indeed there are many members yet one body. It goes on to say this. Verse 27 says, Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. Each one of us is important. Hallelujah. Each one of us is important. As a pastor, the greatest relief I have is when I realize that God doesn't expect me to do everything in church. Thank you, Nick. I may not call you, but Daniel may. Jeevan may. Why? Though we are many, we are one body. Not one person can be expected. This is not a one-man show. The only man on show is Jesus Christ, himself God and man. And though we are many, we are one body. And we are often looking to see what is not there. We're looking at the desolation of the church and not saying, come, let us rebuild together so that the reproach may be taken off. Hallelujah. When you read the, the, the book of Nehemiah, in, even I think in chapter 3, about 38 individuals and 42 different groups are mentioned. Why? Because not a single person can build a wall around a city. It's about a together. It's about God using all kinds of people. There were rulers, there were women, there were men, there were craftsmen, there were professional people. There were people who were outside the city. Nehemiah 3.5 says, um, speaks about the Tekoites. And I want to look at the scripture. Next to them, the Tekoites made repair, but their nobles did not put their shoulders to the work of the Lord. Say the nobles did not put, the work, did not put their shoulder to the work. I was thinking, why did these leaders, these aristocrats, think it was so important that they were so important in their own eyes that they could not perform the manual labor. I want all of us, just put that scripture up. I want all of us to read this. Next to them, the Tekoites made repairs, but their nobles did not put their shoulders to the work of the Lord. 
I want you to close your eyes and ask the Lord, where are you in this equation? Is there work that we're saying we will not do? I want you to open your eyes. Verse 27 says, Nehemiah 3, 27 says, Then after them the Tekoites repaired another section next to the great projecting tower and as far as the wall of Appel. See, there were some people who would not work. And there were some people who were doing double the work. Hallelujah. The study has shown that study after study has shown actually that 90% of the work gets done by about, of work in church gets done by about 10% of the people in the church. And this is true across the board from small congregations to mega churches. What would happen? What would the church accomplish if 100% of the church was working for the cause of Christ and for the glory of God? Hallelujah. Think of the evangelistic outreach, the discipleship opportunities, the vast work that could be done. And so this is the question I'm asking myself in this season of the church as we're coming to gather back. This is my question. And this question I feel applies to Nitya, applies to Uma, applies to Del, applies to Michael, applies to every one of us. This is the question. It's not about what we haven't done, but it's what I can do. I think it was JFK Jr. said, ask not what you can do for your, um, what your country can do for you, what you can do for your country. I change it now. Ask not what your church can do for you. Ask what you can do for the body of Christ. Hallelujah. See, we're not about pointing about we fix the disrepair and we repair. Hallelujah. So these are the questions I'm asking myself and this you, you, it may not apply to you. you guys look like really good Christians because you're here on a Sunday morning. Am I a burden to the work of God? I'm, am I a burden to the work that God is trying to do around me? Or am I making the burden lighter? This is the question. If the study were done in this church, would I be counted as the 10% who does the work or the 90% that doesn't do the work. Let me just say that with a smile. If a study was done in this church, would I be counted as the 10% that does the work <laughs> or the 90% who doesn't do the work? <laughs> Feel better? Which group would I like to be remembered as being the part of? The 90% or the 10%? <laughs> so where do you work? Nehemiah said it, the place is in front of you. You do the work in front. Hallelujah. See, every, there were different gates. There was a shepherd's gate. There was, um, there was uh, the sheep in the sheep gate. There was the, I like this name, Hanfi I've pronounced it perfectly. Repeat with me. Hanfi Together, everybody. I'm teaching you some Hebrew. Ready? One, two, three. Hanfi Correct. Okay? My favorite gate is the dung gate. There was a dung gate. You know what? Some Israelite dude and his family had to rebuild the dung gate. And it was honored in the eyes of the Lord. It was of value. Because otherwise, dung would build up in the city. And it wouldn't be a very pleasant smelling city. We would not be carrying the aroma of Christ. Hallelujah. I'm reading Bible scriptures here. You guys are like, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What I'm saying is this. Work in what, and I believe, okay, this is, I'm so serious now, okay. God is asking us to build, each one of us. Let's get back to that. Build what's in front of us, okay? It's not about our career. 
God will take care of that. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and everything else shall be added unto you. Hallelujah. This is a biblical principle. Simple, simple, simple. Turn to somebody and say, simple, simple, simple. Hallelujah. And one, some, some simple truth is this. Every person's work is important. Your work is important. Your work is important. Your work is important. Every, say, my work is important. Say, my work is important. Hallelujah. Edna's smile is important for me when I'm preaching. If none of you smile, I know Edna will. Hallelujah. You're welcome. Thank you. You know, if she wasn't smiling, you know what kind of response I'm getting? <laughs> you're not smiling. <laughs> you only smile when you're going to go play cricket, my friend. And when you're drunk in the spirit, okay? <laughs> Two reasons. Uh, can I, next week I will bring you a photo of our wedding day. I want you, I want to, yeah, my wedding day. And I want you all to make it your Facebook profile picture saying this is my pastor on his wedding day. It looks like someone took a shotgun and brought him to the wedding. Literally. He looks like he's binding me, doing deliverance on the priest and wondering why he can't run. Why? Because his sister put him in a mundu which looks like a skirt and he couldn't run. And I think there was something there. But 21 years later, the man is blessed. <laughs> and let me tell you, part of building the wall is simple. Be an encourager. Be a Barnabas. Build the other. Okay? So I'm going to give you some instructions right now. Okay? At least do the minimum of encouraging. There are people on the worship team. There are people on the media team. There are people on the sound team. There are people in the kids' church. There are people who are on the service team. Encourage one of them. Be a cheerleader that the work may continue. Let's not let the 10% who's working get discouraged because nobody's noticing them. Either we be the 10% and make it 20 and 30 and 40, or at least encourage the 10%. I'm going to clap for that. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I'm giving solutions. Michael, am I not giving solutions? Really good. Michael has to say that now. Okay? So be, this is homework. And we're building the church together. Simple things. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God. Be on the lookout for those you can encourage. You'll be surprised how many people require encouragement. Okay? And regularly encourage those who are in the habit of serving God. I want to encourage Lynette and Princess. They're... Shani and Shani is cooking like every Monday still. Daniel, Del, Del goes shopping every every week for the last four to five years Dell go shopping how many of you would like to go shopping like that can you imagine and he comes and cuts the vegetables and the onions and when i try to sit down he'd be like no i don't know if it's because my ability to cut is not that great i don't know I just like, okay encourage people because it's worth much in the kingdom hallelujah Start with small things. Build what's in front of you. God uses great things, small things to do great works. The stones in David's hand brought down the giant. The McDonald's Happy Meal in the kid's hand fed 5,000. Yeah, he bought fish nuggets, I'm just telling you. Hallelujah. God has great plans, and each one of us is called to work. Praise God. Each one of us is called to work. I want to end with this scripture, Nehemiah 4, 6. So we rebuilt the wall till all of it has reached half its height. For the people worked with all their heart. This is all I'm asking. That we will build with all our heart. If there's something in our heart that's preventing us from building, catch those little foxes. Repair. Don't be offended with me or the leadership. I'm not perfect. 
not even six feet two. Cristiano Ronaldo, six feet two, it seems. <laughs> Useless information in my brain. Don't even watch football that much. Hallelujah. No human being is perfect. We human beings will let you down. But God is faithful. Amen. Catch those little foxes that prevent you from building his house. For this is between you and God. And the purpose of the work is between you and God. And the plan of the work is between you and God. And the people of the work is you have been called and chosen. And that's all I'm asking today. I believe we're starting a new season. I'm asking everyone here. I'm asking to help build God's wall around the city and to build his house in this place. That's all I'm asking. Can we do it together? Come, let us build. Let's all stand up. If that's you, if this word has touched your heart, lift up your hands to the Lord. Rach, can I have you on keys if you're okay? I want you to take this commitment because I believe we're in a season of rebuilding now. I believe Capstone Church needs to be rebuilt. And God looks at availability, can give even a donkey the ability to speak. So lift up your hands to the Lord in this place. If you walked away and said, that's not my thing, you looked at the desolation of the church and said, that's not my portion. Let the Lord correct you today and let the Lord bring you back. us to take a fresh commitment as leadership in this house I'm giving a call and I'm saying come let us build I want you to lift up your hands if that's you and say, I want to help build. If you need to repent for not building, come before our King and say, here I am God. Repair. Catch those little foxes that have stolen. Father in heaven, is looking for people who are worshippers. His eyes are going to and fro looking for that one person. Even as Preeti was saying, it starts with us carrying the presence of God, us being worshippers. Our God cannot use a lukewarm person. He cannot use somebody who's dry. I know today's the first day back into the house of the Lord. God wants to set us on fire. 
He can only use people who are who carry the fire of God, who carry the authority of God, who carry the glory of God. He can only use people who are overflowing with the river. Each one's calling can be different. Your mandate may be different. You may be called into different mountains. You may be called just to even serve water. But you know what? You still carry the presence of God. You still carry the fire of God. You're still a worshiper. You don't come over here into this. You know what? God's called us to carry the fire. He's called us to carry revival. He can only use people who carry the fire. Shiver and dear Yanako Santo Lavarastine Revese Kerevere. Everything becomes easy when you carry the presence. Santo Revese Kerevere and Dere Refrona Manastana Kora. We don't need to try to make things happen because God's going to go in front of you. The Bible says in Isaiah, it says the glory goes before you. The glory brings the anointing. Just like Linda came and testified, she just got healed in time, in, 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 in a time of worship. Listen, if you're hungry for God, even if you're watching, God's going to heal you where you are. God's going to set you free. God's going to give you a breakthrough. It may, be, it may be whatever you're searching for because it's the glory of the Lord which brings breakthroughs. It's the glory of the Lord which fulfills your destiny, your calling. And everyone over here, like just, just, just Prithius said that you are called. You are called. The most important thing is to know what you're called for. Just lift up your hands if you feel that you're called for God. Call, call for doing something significant. You know what? When God called us, just, just as Preeti said, to build, He said something. He wants us to carry the fire. He wants us to carry revival. He wants us to not just transform cities and nations, but nations. But it can, we can do nothing without the fire. It's the fire that burns. It's that fire that burns in the altar. Vrunti vere revesse kere Santo lavarastana kauramana Shevere revesse kere yanastona Rivruna mana Santo lavarastani kere yana Shevere nde revere God wants us to give God wants to give fresh breakthroughs in this house today. Some of you have come here, come over here dry. Some of you have come over here losing your passion. You know, some of you have thought that you were called before, but when somewhere along the line you drifted away, you don't have the same passion, you don't have the same fire, you don't have the same seal to worship. Listen, God cannot use a, a person who's dry. He wants to set you on fire today. So just want to lift up your hands. Just going to pray for the fire of God to come. The fire of God to come and touch you. The fire of God to come and move in your, in your life. Oh Father, we start each and every one, Lord, who's hungry for God in this place. Who's thirsty. They may have come in over here. They may be watching and that they're dry. Today we pray that you come, Lord. Come in a fresh way. Come with your fire. Come with your glory. Let your presence move. Let every bondage be broken. Let every dryness be lifted right now. Let a fresh fire burn even right now. Let a fresh authority of God set your captives free. And let the fire of God start moving. Father, we pray that you reveal your calling, Lord, in people's lives. You reveal what they're called to. But we thank you, Lord, that you're calling worshippers. You're calling worshippers. 
Let there be a fresh passion for worship. Let there be a fresh passion for your word. Let there be a fresh passion for your presence. Lord, we pray, Lord, that even right now, let your presence increase even in this house, even in this season. Let your glory increase, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is my desire to